So welcome everybody to this session this morning, MPW Live, how to get into engineering with NCUK and the University of Bristol. My name is Steve Phillips, I'm Director International at MPW and uh, very shortly I'll be handing over to our presenters. I'm very pleased to have Ryan back with us again this morning, who's Vice Principal International at MPW Birmingham, also heads up our NCUK programme. And then from the University of Bristol, we've got Xiao Jie on the call with us and uh, Dr. Andrew Harrison. Um, so very pleased to have you both with us this morning. Thank you. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I know it's the most boring part of any webinar. I'm sure we're all used to it now, but just um, please do keep yourselves on mute. Um, I have the power apparently to mute you. So if I do see people coming in and there is background noise, I will I will put you on mute. So please don't be offended if I do that. And um, yeah, for any questions, um, please use the meeting chat function um, and we'll hopefully get to those towards the end if we have time. So um, yeah, I will hand over to Ryan and um, let's start this session off. Ryan, over to you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the introduction. And thanks to you, you guys at Bristol for, for joining us and supporting us today. We, we really appreciate it. Um, so as Steve said, my name is Ryan Moran. I'm Vice Principal um, and Head of NCK in Birmingham. So it's only going to be a brief 10 minute um, introduction from me, a little bit about uh, the NCK course in general, some progression routes, um, and just sharing some of the successes we've had um, over, over the last five years. So as, as agents, um, students, parents, we understand at MPW that you guys have got lots of choice um, in terms of both foundation courses, A-level courses, GCSE. So we, we try to be a little bit different and we try to add that little bit extra to ensure that, that students really make good progress with us um, during their time at MPW. So in terms of our foundation offering, it's very exam focused, but also the, the level of pastoral care is, extre is extremely high. So as a college, um, we judge ourselves on, on added values. So added value is looking at what a student arrives with and then what they leave with, and then giving ourselves a score based on the distance traveled. And nationally, MPW is a top 5% provider in terms of that measure. So you can really see what, what we do works. Um, and often, students achieve grades higher than they actually felt they were capable of when they first joined. So we have small class sizes, so guarantee maximum of 14 students. Depending on the pathway that a student chooses, this, this could often be, be a lot smaller. So some of our humanities groups, um, society and politics, for example, are, are down at three and four. So the amount of support and, and tailored learning provided, again, helps students to really make good progress during their time. Each student is allocated a personal tutor. So I'm one of the personal tutors on the foundation course. And we meet with students every single week on a one to one basis. Um, during that time, we would look at personal statements for university. We look at university choice try to give students an insight both into the cities, the courses that, that they're choosing. Um, we've got to remember that often some of these students have not been in the UK for very long. They might be here for the first time. They might, might have only experienced very few cities. So actually showing them where places are and giving them an insight into what that city is like is, is really important. A big part of the program um, is English, so students study on an EAP course, so English for academic purposes. Um, it's quite, it, it's similar to IELTS, but in my opinion, it, it adds um, a little bit extra. So you look at things like Harvard referencing and a more academic um, English work, which gives students an advantage when they go to university. 
just the process of referencing it is a real good skill for them to take to take in before they go on to that next level of study. All of our colleges provide accommodation. Um, the, the accommodation in Birmingham is, is really convenient. It's next door to our college building. So we've got around about 50 rooms, um, 20 second walk from, from room to, to lesson. So um, students never have any excuse for being late and, and don't have to incur any, any um, travel expenses to get to college. And just like with any of our offerings, foundation students are fully embedded into, into MPW in the college. They will mix with both A-level and GCSE students and other international and domestic students. So it's, it's one big community where everyone gets along and everyone learns from, from their peers. NCK has has several partner universities. So obviously we're with the University of Bristol today, and um, they're they're one of our top progression universities. So if we looked back at, at the stats, they were probably our most popular choice, um, especially for anything related to engineering on the foundation over the last five years. Um, but but as we can see, there there are other universities um, both inside NCK partners and outside. So students have plenty of choice of courses, but also university for progression. We offer four pathways, both in Birmingham and in, and in Cambridge. So you've got business, science, the engineering pathway, which we're talking more about today, um, and humanities. So you can see that three of the pathways there involve maths. Um, so if you do have students who maths is not one of their top skills or one of their real strengths, then the humanities pathway um, would, would be a good choice. Now, the level of maths required, especially on the engineering programme, is, is quite high. It's quite difficult stuff, both within the maths element, but also the physics element of the course. So that, that's something to be aware of um, for the outcomes on, on all path, pathways are excellent. We've actually achieved 100% A star to B on two pathways in, in the last two years. So you can see that the students who do join us often um, leave with, with top grades. We do open days and, and visits to university. So we actually go to Bristol every single year, but not, not just for foundation students, but for A level as well. So um, Obviously not this year because of the pandemic, but in previous previous years since I've been here, we we visited University of Bristol every single year, and we also do a tailored NCK Open Day um, at University of Manchester. So there's lots of opportunities for students to get out, see universities, attend guest lectures. Because as I said earlier, it's really important that we're helping them to make the right choices. They're going to be at university for three, four, five years, depending on their course choice. So they need to feel comfortable. Um, within the environment that, that they're going to study in. Extracurricular, um, although we are sort of very academically focused and we want students to, to be driven to get good grades, we understand that it's important to have, to have some balance within that. So we do have a really busy extracurricular programme. So we've got several sports teams that, that we have um, competed on a Tuesday afternoon. Artists exhibitions, um, MUN, so Model United Nations, who also compete in competitions around the UK. And we also do a couple of overseas trips um, every year. So prior to the pandemic, we went to Paris for a business conference where students um, had the opportunity to meet with big businesses like Lush, Innocent Smoothers, um, present ideas and and just get a little bit of insight into, into the working world and, and what they would experience after college and university. Success, so we all we all like success and we know it's a, it's a big factor when, when choosing um, colleges or schools for your students. So we have won NCK awards um, each, each year since the start of the programme. So the one on the screen was was University of Manchester specific top performance student awards, um, cash prize, 
and um, invite to, to a, ce a celebration ceremony. Our results. So this was 2020, so that the most recent year. Now you might be thinking, oh, well, students didn't take exams in that year, so results nationally were higher. But that wasn't the case um, for NCK. NCK students had exams just, just as normal, unlike A level and GCSE students. So these results are, are similar to, to the previous years. They're not far higher. I've not just given you the, the, the highest one. Um, this is this is what we get on average since or we've got on average since the start of the program. So you can see 80% of students achieved an A star or A grade. 50% of students achieved an A star, and on the science and humanities pathway, 100% of students achieved all A star grades. So every single student on that program did not get a grade below a B. So really fantastic um, achievement and a credit to the teaching staff and obviously the hard work of the students um, within the MPW environment. Example of some destinations. So again, you can see a wide range of courses and a, and a wide range of universities from economics through to medicine with a couple of engineering courses there too. But again, you can see NCK partner universities in there, but also universities outside of the NCK. So the foundation course does give students lots of choice when applying to university. And we get some really, really good competitive offers um, for our students. 2019 and 2020, um, MPW Birmingham was nominated for Study Centre of the Year and the Student Satisfaction Award. So again, it's nice to see the external provider um, giving recognition to, to MPW for the level of service they provided to their students and the quality of outcomes that have been achieved. Right, so I'm, I'm going to be here for, for questions at the end um, after the guys at Bristol have, have taught you a little bit more. Um, but thanks very much for joining us and um, I'll look forward to speaking to you again at the end. Thanks, Ryan. That's great. Thanks for the thanks for the introduction. Um, yes, yeah, so Ryan will be here if there are any specific questions for him at the end. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to Chao Jie, University of Bristol. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ryan. So I, I believe everyone can see my screen now. So I will just give you a very brief introduction about the University of Bristol and the city of Bristol. My name is Xiao Jie. I'm an International Foundation Program Recruitment Officer at the University of Bristol. So why the University of Bristol? I think Ryan just mentioned a little bit about our engineering course. It's quite popular and it's also one of the most popular uh, universities among NCUK MPW students. So from this slide, you can see some rankings and reputations about us. We ranked nice in the UK based on QS World University ranking 2021, 58 in the world, seventh most targeted university by top UK employers, and the fifth in the UK for research, nice in Europe for teaching quality, we have 32 subjects in the World Top 100. This is based on the latest 2021 QS World University rankings by subject. We linked to 13 Nobel Prize winners based on 2019-20 calendar year award 27,000 students from more than 150 countries. And uh, I've also put some like a subject specific ranking in the UK in case I know lots of students are interested in this. From this slide, you can see the board text where I've highlighted engineering courses. All our engineering courses are ranked top 10 in the UK. General engineering, which refers to our engineering design course ranked uh, second in the UK, aerospace engineering four, civil fifth and mechanical six, and tenth uh, triple E. And uh, this slide you can find the Guardian University Guide 2021. 
and our general engineering rank number one, mechanical engineering number one as well, and second, civil engineering. So overall, this might give you some like uh, information like how strong our engineering courses in the country. And second part, the city of the Bristol. Uh, I don't know how many of you have visited Bristol before. As Ryan mentioned previously, they may offer some student like a city tour, campus tour to come to Bristol. And Bristol as a city has been named as the best place to live outside of London, kindest city and best city to live in the UK twice by Sunday time in 2014 and 2017 respectively. Also, as the first city has been named as the European Green Capital in Bristol. If you visited Bristol before, you may notice lots of green uh, spaces in the city. We have over 400 parks and coolest UK cities. Uh, Bristol has lots of other titles like UNESCO City of Film. That's why there are lots of international film festival. Hot Air Balloon Festival in the summer attracts thousands of tourists all over the world. And Bristol is also famous for its street graffiti. If you heard Banksy, he's from Bristol. And uh, for student life, it's ranked as best UK city for student life. So we're in the heart of this city centre. Beside us, we also have the UWE, which is also just like 20 minutes away from city centre. So it's a very lively city for students. From this slide, you can see some images we took from the city. The first one, College Green, which is just five minutes away from our main campus, and harbour side views, and one of the, our park, Queen Square, very popular. And King Street, you can find lots of like uh, pubs, cafe and restaurant, also the famous old Victoria theatres also on this street. In terms of our location, from the map on my right side, you can see Bristol is located in southwest of England, uh, not far away from London, around one hour, 20 minutes. And so Bristol has the, its own international airport, which is just 20 minutes away by car. Uh, if you travel through London Heathrow, it's, which is just located in the west of London, uh, Bristol has a direct coach service from our campus to uh, Heathrow Airport and thanks to its super convenient transportation links you our students are able to travel to nearby cities also other European cities with very short time this distance. In terms of student life um, lots of events and festivals all year round I mentioned some of some of them already like international festival uh, film festival hot air balloon festival and we also host Europe's largest street art festival. In terms of shopping, in the city centre, you have the Cabot Circus. It's a super modern big shopping mall, also working distance from our campus, also to your residential hall. And near campus, we have the Clifton Village and White Ladies Road, full of independent boutiques close to the main campus. A restaurant and cafes from the Park Street, you can find lots of like cafes, restaurants during the lunchtime. Our students just usually just grab some food from there and sit in the nearby parks. And in terms like World Food Supermarket, especially for international students, they may consider like, can I find some groceries from my countries in Bristol? Uh, we're lucky like we have all kinds of like uh, supermarkets to help our students get, get your ingredients you may need for your cuisine. And I think that's all from me, very short brief about our city. Uh, now I will hand it over to Andrew to give you more information about our Faculty of Engineering. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Xiaoje, and hello to uh, people watching. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the uh, Faculty of Engineering now. So I hope you can see that screen. Uh, perhaps somebody could confirm you can see that. 
Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, fine. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, why you might study engineering, about our schools, departments, reputation, the degrees you can study with us, and then at the far side of that, of your degree, the careers, employability um, for, for you at the end, and some opportunities whilst you're here. Um, so uh, the first thing to look at is what what engineers do, and we really do have this vital role in society um, in solving society's needs. If you look around you, um, you'll find almost nothing uh, that didn't have an engineer involved in either its design, its manufacture, transportation of it to you, um, uh, 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 in research and, and development of, of products as well. And as a career, it offers tremendous opportunities for improving uh, the life of, of humanity. Um, some examples here from aerospace. So in Bristol alone, um, it's a very old aeroplane, more than 100 years old on the left. Uh, uh, another one, uh, the world's fastest uh, passenger aircraft that can um, fly at um, more than 2,000 kilometers an hour and then a more modern Airbus. Now all of these have components made in Bristol, research, design, development in Bristol. Um, we can look at similar change in civil engineering from old sort of houses like the, the one on the left, a few hundred years old, uh, the Eiffel Tower in France of course, and then world's tallest skyscraper, I think still the world's tallest skyscraper. Now these uh, have very different engineering challenges and for engineers to go from designing the one on the left to the one on the right, you can imagine has required all sorts of development of engineering science, of manufacturing and, and the research development behind those um, and the sheer organisation, project management to get those built. Uh, even something uh, uh, like an earthquake we can see here that has shaken this structure down reminds us of the importance of engineers to be able to design things well such that this kind of disaster only happens very infrequently. Uh, uh, another simple thing, water. Um, it's engineers that will be involved in designing the, the reservoirs, the pipe work, the distribution systems, and even now the, the, the metering systems, the billing systems. Um, but providing water is a vital thing for the world, for agriculture, for industry, and of course to drink. Uh, and as the world's population grows, our requirement for water grows, even though it may not rain more. So another important role for engineers. Um, Developing technology. This is just for sport, you can see uh, here. And um, this sort of technology here has really transformed the lives of those athletes. Uh, we can think of space as being a, uh, the cutting edge of um, uh, engineering in, in, in some sectors. And uh, particularly important, not just for exploration, you've seen just in the last month, I think three separate countries have sent. Um, space vehicles to Mars because it's close to the Earth at the moment uh, to, to have a look around, do some science there. Um, and, but also uh, the satellites and the telecommunications, there's thousands of satellites now in space that enable us to do things like talk together today, but to make mobile phone calls around the world uh, and to send television, radio, etc. signals. Um, around uh, conveniently, rapidly, and aerospace engineers will be at the heart of designing those systems. The energy revolution that we know we need to uh, carry through uh, will have engineers at the heart of it. So you can see this old gas oil rig on the right. Well, we now um, have many of these windmills around the world. Some of these are uh, 200 meters tall, enormous structures um, generating many megawatts of power for many decades. Also the solar panels, solar furnaces. Um, now these are uh, again designed by engineers, maintained by engineers, built by engineers. And if you look at say the windmill for example, 
We'll have civil engineers involved in fixing it to the ground, to the seabed, or to the to the rocks in the on shore. Um, we'll have aerospace engineers treating these blades like a propeller blade or like a wing. Electrical electronic engineers involved in the motor design to the turbine design to turn that wind power into electrical power, and then to transmit that power um, through to the uh, through to the. The, the mains electricity network and the role, of course, of mechanical engineers in, in the designing of these structures as well. So uh, these are big projects that will really change the, the course of human uh, behavior, open so many opportunities to us. Uh, uh, other technologies here you can see designed by engineers um, to uh, enable us to design products more rapidly to, as well as the new products themselves to consider. Uh, I want now to just talk a bit about the engineering faculty, so photograph inside one of our buildings here. We have around 480 academic staff. We're quite a large faculty, um, but we're divided into six departments uh, themselves within two schools. Uh, the important thing, though, is to see the departments for each degree subject, so civil engineering, aerospace, mechanical, as well as computer science, electrical, electronic engineering, and engineering maths. Hand in hand with our teaching, we have our research. In fact, we get slightly more income from research than we do from teaching. Currently, we have about 60 million pounds of research income uh, in, in, in research grants. And th that research money comes from the government, from the taxpayer, but also from industry, from the UK and around the world. And one of the important things to consider when choosing a university is if you go to a university with a strong research base, then you know that the academic staff will, many of them will be involved in research with industry. So that will keep them up to date with industry's needs, industry's developments, and because of that close contact we have with industry. And that helps us talking to our students to relay that information to students and to keep our courses fresh and up to date with industry's current and future needs. Uh, and as Xiaojie mentioned, we have some very strong rankings, depending on which league table you look at, um, from in, always in the, in the top 10 in the UK for engineering, and typically much higher than that. Uh, so our degrees, well, you can do three or four year degree um, for bachelor's or master's um, programs. Uh, you can spend a year abroad, you can spend a year in industry if you wish to. So we have students um, uh, spending their third year working for a company in paid employment, um, learning how to put into practice some of the engineering science that we have taught them in the first two years, but also learning you know, what it's like to have a boss, uh, to have deadlines that you must stick to, to, uh, to work on real engineering problems. They're not just putting boxes on shelves, they're, uh, they're carrying out jobs that in a year's time after graduation, they would carry out as graduate engineers. So that year in industry program, we're finding for UK and international students, whether in the UK or, or abroad, um, is helping them to uh, get great jobs subsequently, but also to have a good understanding of what a diff different industry sectors are like, different employers are like. Um, so we're finding that a key strength of our degrees. During the actual uh, years spent at Bristol, um, the teaching is not so different to what you'll have at school. So we have some lectures, but also laboratory work, tutorials, project work. <clears throat> Engineering, as, as Xiaojie mentioned, we need strong mathematics, um, but there's also a very important role for practical work in it. Is you just as you wouldn't trust a doctor who'd um, only watched operations on a TV screen, a computer screen. Similarly, you wouldn't trust an engineer who hadn't had practical experience of designing, building, testing things as well. So we build that into our, our degree programs. You'll have around 20 contact hours a week, um, and there's uh, components of that, some analysis, engineering science, but also design, problem solving, experimentation. Um, engineering, wherever you study it, is hard work, but we provide you with lots of support. 
uh, and our degrees are all accredited by uh, the relevant professional bodies so you can become a chartered engineer this is a becoming chartered is like a badge that allows you then to work anywhere in the world because it's a recognized um, standard of achievement um, i can show a um, example of a sort of laboratory scale experiments we can do you might consider how how this balancing is done you know this is a um, what we're going to do is flip this little beam upside down and the computer's then controlling it to keep it keep it vertical and just by moving it now this shows things like some electronics but also automatic control subject i teach in that the system is able to respond to disturbances in quite a stable way um, we can even do that with two beams balanced one on top of the other as this one will show so this is a typical kind of uh, laboratory experiment that you might do you might design and build this yourself perhaps in later years of degree um, but there's some electronics there's some dynamics in there some there's the, the fundamental physics if you like uh, as well as the sensors to, to measure how the beam is uh, is behaving and the control uh, understanding to make it do what we want it to do um, just to, even this one we can tip it a little bit and it will still keep its balance so that's a uh, that's a a fairly simple thing to do. It turns out though that the same mathematics, the same, same physics behind that, the keeping the beam pointing upwards, is exactly the same that rocket engineers will use in trying to launch a rocket and to keep that heading up straight or in the desired trajectory. So that little um, bench experiment like this um, leads directly into the kind of work that um, uh, aerospace engineers would, would do. Um, if I look a little bit at different degree programs now, so if you study aerospace engineering, there's a list of subjects there. You can see that flight dynamics would be an obvious one, aeronautics, mechanics, but also work on aerospace systems and understanding the challenges there. Uh, mathematics will be at the heart of that. I've shown um, there's down the bottom a couple of little optional projects students have done as part of their degree in third or fourth year. One, I, I don't have a video for this, but this is a device that will control a satellite to keep it pointing in the right direction all the time. Um, you know, if something on the ground is not pointing the right way, you can just turn it. But if it's in space, there's nothing to push against. So you have to, to have some clever systems to line things up to keep like the Hubble telescope pointing at the direction you want it to point. It doesn't happen by chance. It has engineering at the heart of that. We also take some ideas from nature. There's a model of a bird here putting one of our wind tunnels measuring the lift and the drag uh, on it. And we have uh, many other uh, models like that. So some students wanted to study bird aerodynamics to see what they could learn from that. Um, I'm going to pass over this video. It takes a little long, but just to say we had some students working to help develop and improve these rocket suits uh, that this guy's wearing. He can fly around, um, uh, fly around Bristol, uh, other parts of the world with that. Uh, and our students were involved in design and development of that. Um, we'll move on to civil engineering. So if you think of what civil engineers do, then they they make these large structures, the built environment, and their work will stand for, for decades, if not hundreds of years. And so they tend to involve large group projects. You, 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 you're not going to design a bridge and, and build it sitting on your own. Be a, a big team of people. Um, mathematics, again, at the heart of this, but also structures, understanding the soil, the rocks that you're your buildings, your dams, your motorways are, are being built on. Um, use of computers to help us improve designs, uh, to ensure they're going to be strong enough, they're going to fit together, to plan the assembly of these big structures. Um, and increasingly, we emphasize the our interaction with the environment and our responsibility uh, with the environment as well. Um, and uh, we send our students on a surveying course as well to learn some practical skills there. I hope this one will work. This is a, our shaking table. We, we don't really have earthquakes in the UK of any significance, I'm happy to say, but we know that engineers working around the world will have to tackle those. So 
This video shows some buildings, some, some little toy buildings students have made out of um, just wood and other materials, carrying quite heavy weights and then being shaken uh, around. And they learn a lot from this about what makes it, they design these themselves. They will learn what makes a strong structure and what doesn't. Now here it's, it's, it's just for fun really, isn't it? But you can imagine in the uh, subsequent careers, they'll remember this exercise and if you scale this up to be strong buildings, it's uh, with people in them, it's clear the, the importance of getting this kind of thing right. Um, mechanical engineering, very popular degree, a general degree, um, and opens the doors to many different engineering careers. I would suggest that if you're uncertain which degree to study, then mechanical engineering is the most general, so it's, um, it's a good choice. Uh, not just at Bristol, but any university, it tends to be a general degree. Um, if you think of a typical mechanical engineering project, it could be a car or it could be a robot. But in, in the, uh, for example, with a car, you need to think about as this air show, picture shows the aerodynamics, the airflow. You need to think about the materials, um, like a civil engineer would. You know, is it going to be strong enough? Is it going to look attractive? You'll have to think about the thermodynamics of the, of the engine in there. Um, you certainly need to know some software design. Um, around 30% of the value of a car now comes from its, uh, its software and its electronics at the heart of that. Uh, again, in mechanical engineering, lots of emphasis on design, build, test, and uh, I could apply those same thoughts to um, design of uh, robots. We work um, with the, uh, one of the largest um, research laboratories in robotics. It's based in Bristol, the largest in, in, the, in Europe. Uh, all sorts of interesting, exciting projects coming out of there. So we move robots from working just in factories but to being more around us in our relatively unstructured world that we, we all live in. Um, they need very different skills uh, than a factory robot and developing those, making them softer, making them more intelligent, um, making them fit to work with people in our kind of messy, um, unpredictable world is a, is a major task for um, all sorts of engineers. Uh, well, student project here, an early year study at Bristol, they had to make, um, using very little time, um, some vehicles that could walk up a ramp and then uh, go across a pool of water and then down the other side. Uh, and so some of these work better than others. This was, I think, a year ago, uh, sorry, 18 months ago. Um, this one got stuck. But you can see they've used some foam metal, there's some simple electronics they've designed, there's some, uh, uh, some wood they've cut using laser cutters, uh, and come up with different designs, some of which work better than others. So a good practical experience there. Uh, another degree we have, which uh, I think it may be the only place in the UK, you can study this, engineering mathematics. So it's maths for sure, but maths applied to um, many of the engineering and real world problems um, to, help, to help to solve those. For example, some uh, of our academic staff studying mathematical modeling of traffic flow uh, in cities. You know, it's a big headache for many uh, people every day spending a lot of time traveling. Uh, and mathematics is helping them to uh, redesign traffic flow systems to advise on, on uh, road design uh, and as well as safety systems. And, and, and so they have a, an important role to play there. Uh, there's also a role with things like uh, artificial intelligence, data analytics, big data that engineering maths will lead straight into. We have a joint degree in mechanical and electrical engineering, and this has been running for a few years now. And we brought this degree in as a combination of parts of those two separate degree programs, but really recognizing that as we move away from burning fossil fuels, 
as our main source of energy towards uh, electricity and renewable electricity, whether from solar, or hydro, wind power, nuclear power. Um, we need a better understanding, we need more engineers who can take that electrical power and use it in, in, in vehicles, but also in heating systems, cooling systems. And so we set up this degree, that, that management of electrical energy, power conversion, uh, there's electronics at the heart of that as well, and also sensors and actuators, as you, you can see some of uh, this, this um, artificial hand here with many sensors on it. Um, and the move towards all electric vehicles is, is coming fast, so this is, a, a, again, a great degree. Um, electrical electronic engineering degree. Uh, Many jobs in this area are uh, the UK doesn't have enough electrical engineers. We we bring in mainly from around the world to work here. We have very strong research, very strong development. Taking those products forward to manufacture uh, is a is a is a is another key task for electronic engineers. We've got some uh, because of links with many top local companies. For example, Toshiba have their world, uh, sorry, the European research headquarters in Bristol, uh, close links with them uh, uh, and the silicon corridor that runs between us and, and, and London uh, gives us access to many uh, uh, high tech firms who are very hungry for our electronic engineering students. Uh, uh, computer science degree, this is another hot subject at the moment, uh, will teach you uh, uh, not just how to use software, but how to write software, what's at the heart of that, um, and software for all sorts of reasons. So the first couple of years of core skills in, in, in mathematics, in, in programming, database analysis, this kind of uh, key subjects. Within the third year, fourth year, you can see some of those specialisms that you can pursue to, depending on the career direction you might like. They're really quite different there. You can imagine things like image processing, computer vision, not just for games, but for you know, um, making sense of robots, making sense of the world that they see around us. Um, I've got a mechanical engineering student, for example, this year, one of my third year project students, and he's developing a system for a drone that would um, kept outside his house. Um, he lives in, in California. Uh, that this drone will take off when there's a fire and will find where the fire is from its vision system, will fly towards it, and then um, carrying uh, devices that will release onto them to put the fire out. Now, that involves some new processing work, of course, but also some electronics and some. Uh, uh, some control theory uh, for the drone. It has to be remotely, it has to pilot itself. Um, and so those are, he's a mechanical engineer, but nonetheless, you can see the computing science skills that he will pick up along the way by talking to colleagues in the computer science department. Artificial intelligence, another uh, huge growth area. How do we take this mass of statistics of uh, understanding how uh, how the world works, how, how problems are, are constructed, and then turn that into that data into intelligence. And that again is some quite fundamental mathematics problems behind there, as well as uh, uh, trawling through gigabytes of terabytes of, of of data about the world and human patterns of behaviour. Uh, So those are some of our different degrees that we offer, so all of our different degrees. Um, we will also help you with your future career. Starting from day one, all of our first year students are given an industrial mentor. So this is a, an engineer who could have been working for a few years or maybe for 30 years in industry. And you'll meet them a few times and they will tell you about their career. They will help give you advice about yours. They can tell you about decisions they made that were good and also mistakes that they made. Um, they can give you a, a, a view as to what it might be like to work in their area. And so that's a, a, a very useful thing we give to all our first year students. Uh, we, our industrial liaison office also helps uh, arrange internships of work in, over the summer, whether in the UK or overseas. And 
uh, we bring in uh, academic, uh, sorry, we bring in engineers from uh, many industries during the year to give guest talks. So, for example, um, one of our students, our, our graduates, uh, graduated maybe 20 years ago. He is the head of engine development at Bentley, so a luxury car manufacturer, and he gave a talk about uh, how they have um, improved the performance, the efficiency and the power output from their engines over the recent years. Um, and you could hear from his discussion of the decisions he's making, the kind of teamwork that he does, um, the sorts of graduate engineers that he's looking for to recruit for the future. Um, uh, th that kind of talk is very helpful to our students in changing their thoughts. Um, we have a year in industry team that help arrange uh, jobs for you if you want to spend a year in industry as part of your degree. And of course, the career service will help you get jobs at the end. Uh, just a um, list of some of the um, types of companies our students have gone to work for um, in recent years. I mentioned our robotic laboratory, the Bristol Robotics Laboratory. So the claim, which I believe is true, the most comprehensive academic centre for multidisciplinary robotics research in the UK and lots of student work in that area across the a whole range of degree programmes. Uh, we provide a, a hack space, an area where you, <clears throat> with some of the technicians, you can make things for real, whether they're you know, cutting bits of metal using the, some of the 3D printers that we have, soldering. So try out some ideas. Um, our students have lots of ideas <clears throat> for software, hardware, um, experimental rigs, things you just want to build. Even 3D print yourself a new phone case if you want to. Um, you can try these things out. If they work, it's fine. If they don't, it doesn't matter. You can experiment and try again. We find that a, a very useful opportunity for our students to experiment. Uh, OK, that's me done. And so I'd like to ask whether you have any questions for any of us, please. Thanks, Andrew. Thank, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so interesting. I mean, it's aerospace engineering and that satellite control. It's uh, it's it's just it's so fascinating to to hear you talk through that as if it's so simple. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, just really quite quite inspiring actually. Um, so thank you, thank you for presenting that. Um, I didn't see any questions come up, but I I usually have one or two. Um, so I. If I may, I'd, li I'd like to ask you about the university rankings. I know you, you covered it a little bit, um, but I, I think your engineering department with one or two of them is number one, isn't it? And that how how do you do that? I mean, is QS the one that you refer to? It's I mean, it's there's so many out there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, um, I can be a little bit cynical about them. Um, I mean, it's great when they say we're number one. I think it was the Guardian said we're number one for mechanical engineering. Um, meanwhile, the complete university guide, which I think last year said we were, I don't know, third or something, has now decided we're sick. So who knows? You know, you, you I would, uh, the if I was really honest, I would say, where's the best Where's the best place to study engineering? I would say is Cambridge. Um, but the league tables, they exist. Um, to make a profit for somebody um, and they provide some useful information along the way. So they will look at um, how um, things like the quality of your students coming in. So what are their what are their grades essentially? Um, now that's a little bit ambiguous at the moment, but in the past they look at you know, are you getting students with A stars and A's coming in and so on? And you might notice for NCUK we require an A star and two A's. As our entry requirement, um, so and, and our A level entry requirements are the same as that. So that's one thing. They'll also look at our research, and we're very strong um, research portfolio in Bristol. Uh, they look at the graduate prospects. You know, so this is hard evidence as to what proportion of your graduates, um, sort of six months after graduating, are now working in graduate level jobs. So not not. You know, Pretty much anybody can get a job, but a, but a graduate level job is something that our, our students clearly want to have, and, and we've always come out well in that measure. 
They'll look at, some of them look at the salaries graduates are earning five years later. Um, the, uh, but the key measures typically are your research, your teaching quality, your student entry standards, and their graduate, the, the prospects afterwards. Um, and we always come out well. You know, Bristol is a successful university, um, and that opens all sorts of doors to us in terms of getting great staff in, great students, and um, industry being keen to work with us. Um, it's also it's a nice city to live in. Um, as uh, as Shai Jay mentioned, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a good size of city. It's it's old enough that it's got layers of history and all sorts of attractions um, but it's not it's not so huge that you get sort of swamped by it all so yeah it's a, it's a nice place to be yeah thank you um and and the last question you, you mentioned it already about the year in industry um that's very interesting i think and does that does that extend the length of the degree and, and is that available for international students as well? I think it is, isn't it? Yes, so the answer is yes to both of those. So uh, at the moment, uh, it's a, it will extend your degree to five years, so an MEng degree, you, you spend your third year in industry um, and then come back and, and finish the last two years of an MEng degree. If students wish to, they can leave with a B-Eng, having done a year in industry after, after um, four years. And it, it's not for everyone. Some students will say they just want to get through the degree. The advantage I've seen of it is just the extra maturity that students get from having worked. And they come back and uh, it definitely helps them uh, in, their, in their remaining years at, at, at Bristol to, to be that bit more focused and to know what they're going for. And, very often, the um, it, it will uh, if the company they work for will, will either offer them a job to say, look, come back when you finish your degree, or else will uh, they will at least be able to give them a good reference and be able to help them formulate their thoughts about where they might work. And yeah, definitely open to to international students, uh, whether in the UK or elsewhere. Yeah. Great, thank you, and I. I think perhaps just one very quick last question, which is, hasn't come up today, but came up on some previous weeks to um, some of our university partners about how the pandemic, it's a pandemic question, how the pandemic has changed the nature of teaching. Of course, it's been changed for the last 12 months, but do you see this as being a permanent shift now? I think, well, so one thing, yeah, we, we had to move to remote teaching and uh, I had to learn about Zoom and Teams and all these other things. The other thing we did um, was to put together a kit of parts. So some like a, 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 um, a Raspberry Pi microcomputer, some, some sensors, like an accelerometer, a microphone, uh, and some simple mechanical bits and bearings and so on, and put that together and sent that to every single one of our first year students and then made up some laboratory experiments they can do in their bedroom um, without electrocuting themselves or breaking anything. So uh, uh, so that was one rapid adaption that we made at, at Bristol and that seems to have been well received. Um, in terms of teaching, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd far rather speak to a class or lecture room full of students than to shout at a, at a <laughs> At a, at a computer microphone and camera um, but I think we what we have done is uh, we pre-recorded a lot of our lectures and split them up into kind of 10 minute 20 minute chunks so the students can watch those whenever they want and if we're going too fast they can slow it down or pause it if we're boring them and they've heard it all before they can play it twice as fast so they can watch those whenever they want and then that saves our kind of formal lecture slot time, which is still online this year, um, to do more interactive stuff, responding more to questions in a way that perhaps you can't during a, a lecture because it will break up the flow. So that's been um, that's been uh, how we've had to adapt, and it seems to have been well received. I suspect we'll keep some of that next year. That's the intention. We'll we'll be back in the buildings. In fact, I've been engineering building now. Um, we'll be welcoming students back soon, some of them uh, immediately after Easter. Uh, 
this year and we will find a way through. You know, engineers are great problem solvers. Uh, it's, it's sort of what we do. So I'm sure we'll keep some of the online stuff, the bits the students found most helpful, but definitely looking forward to getting the students back into our research laboratories, our teaching laboratories, and, and uh, back in the classrooms as well. Yeah, great, thanks. I think if we were to leave it to one faculty to solve all of this, it definitely would be a faculty such as yours, engineering, <laughs> so problem solving and solutions. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Medical sciences might have something to say about that, I think. They, um, they, they might, yeah. We'll, we'll talk to them next time. <laughs> um, just a quick question then from Andy that's come through in the chat function um, about which area is in most demand at the moment in terms of job opportunities, do you think, from your faculty? Civic, civic engineering, mechanical, the aerospace engineering that you mentioned. Yes, I, I mean, it, it's interesting. First of all, aerospace, you think, well, nobody's flying, are they? Uh, they probably will. There's, there's another big challenge for aerospace, of course, is the need to decarbonize. And at the moment, we don't have anything that can compete with fossil fuels. So there are ways around that, but green flight is looking tricky. Um, uh, but nonetheless, aerospace is, is still very popular. Um, the uh, uh, terms of job opportunities, civil engineering uh, tends to come and go a bit according to how the world economy is going. Um, civil engineering projects can be very expensive, um, so that fluctuates, but there will, in the end, there will always be a demand for that. Um, Mechanical engineering, very broad, triple E, yeah, huge demand for triple E engineers. So I would, uh, I wouldn't choose based on current job demand. I would say, what is it that interests you? Uh, and then work in that area. If you're not sure what interests you, then pick one of the more general degrees. Um, so lots of universities offer general engineering. For us, that would either be, I'd say, mechanical or mechanical and electrical or engineering design degree um, would be good, good for those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so that, I mean, we're officially out of time, but one question did just come in about changing. I don't know, this might be for you or for Xiaojie. Um, can you change? A degree so if you start it and you want to switch to something else um, within the same university how easy is it to switch between faculties I suppose if, if that sort of thing happens not that it would I yeah. imagine uh, oh yeah well every year we get a few students I think because you can't study engineering at school you study maths physics chemistry computer science or you know uh, biology languages whatever um, and so some students are not really that sure what it is um, and so uh, in terms of the academic side uh, if you leave it more than a few weeks you'll find that there's if you've been studying aerospace engineering and you want to switch to civil engineering for example you will simply have missed stuff so what we would uh, and it would be hard to catch up so I think within a, about three weeks it's pretty straightforward the caveat I should yeah. have is that that's not guaranteed because it could be that um, the uh, department you want to change to says that we're just we're not just full we're a bit over full so um, I'm sorry we can't offer that um, typically would then be able to say but you know come back next year uh, and, and start again um, but in general we're trying to be pretty accommodating we know that you've chosen Bristol you've chosen engineering and so if you find within a short space of time of starting that you want to change, then typically that's possible, but not always. Um, some students will decide before they come to Bristol. So they get their offer and then they sort of think, oh, actually, I'll... if you can tell us as soon as possible, that increases the chance that we can change around. Yeah. I, to give an example, so mechanical engineering, we take about 200 students, but we will have about 2,000 applications this year. So, you know, <laughs> We are heavily in demand um, and some of the other departments are similarly oversubscribed. So uh, we, we, are, we do have to be careful not to offer too many places such that we end up too full and, and then the quality of teaching would fall. Yeah. That's great. I, I think, yeah, thank you so much for, for those answers and for those insights. Um, I think we're about done. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for uh, participating in this, this week's session and for Xiao Jie as well and Ryan introducing the session. 
Um, really good to see you all. And um, yeah, thanks for everyone for joining in this week. And we'll have the recording um, ready for you and we'll send that out to all um, people who registered for the program. So have a good rest of the day, everyone, or evening, wherever in the world you are. And um, see you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.